Hey, hey, welcome everyone to this week's episode of the Amazon Files brought to you by Mommy Income. I am Kristen Ostrander and I'm excited about today's show because I love busting myths. There's a lot of myths and talks about wholesale and what you can afford and what you can't. Trust me, we get so many emails all the time from people that talk about, I can't afford wholesale or I can't find vendors or all these different things. So today's episode is all about busting those myths, busting those excuses so you can get on board with selling wholesale. Wholesale is the most legitimate thing. Every retailer in the universe does wholesale and private label, a lot of them. And so we're going to talk about how you can get rid of your fear, have some confidence to be able to move forward and do some wholesale. So before we do that, I want to make sure that you know about our Facebook group. And if you have any questions from beginner to advanced and you want to talk about any of these things or talk with other amazing sellers, come to mommyincome.com com slash join with the keyword today of yes you can because we're gonna tell I'm gonna tell you today why yes you can you can do wholesale yes you can afford it yes you can do it and so these are the five myths that we're gonna talk about and I'm gonna bust them during the show so you are left without excuses and you can jump into wholesale right now so number one these are the five things we're gonna go through wholesale is too expensive I can't afford it Y'all, you have no idea how much I hate the phrase, I can't afford it. If you have read my book, which is Dream Big, Step Small, you can buy it on Amazon. Um, my book talks a whole chapter about money mindset and how the words I can't afford it, afford it were like haunting in my childhood. I hate the words I can't afford it. Instead, we say it's not a priority, but regardless, we're going to talk about how wholesale is not expensive and you can afford it. And we're going to talk about that. Number two is I can't find wholesale vendors and suppliers and distributors. <sighs> I'm just going to let that out for a minute. This is the number one thing that drives me crazy. I'm going to throw my husband under the bus really quick and I love him to pieces, but I literally joke for y'all that are listening on the podcast and can't actually see me on the YouTube video or whatever. Like this is how my husband looks for stuff and my children have followed around. So they, he cover, I swear he covers his eyes and like, I can't find the, this, I can't find the, that take your blinders off and just realize that if you do a couple of quick things, which we'll talk about today, you can find suppliers. If you can't find suppliers, it's because you're not looking or you're not looking in the right places. So I'm gonna help you with that so that you can't say anymore, I can't find suppliers, I can't find vendors, I can't find distributors, I can't find wholesalers. Absolutely, yes, you can. We have this amazing thing called Google, but besides Google, there's other methods and ways to be able to find distributors, wholesales, vendors, um, all those things to be able to buy wholesale products. So. That's myth number two. Myth number three, they won't sell to Amazon sellers or third-party sellers. There's a little bit of truth to that in some vendors, but guess what? There's millions of companies out there making wholesale products, millions. So if you contacted five people and they said, no, we don't take third-party sellers, we don't take Amazon sellers, that's five out of millions. Is that a big ratio? No. So we're going to talk about that. Residential delivery. So a lot of smaller sellers say, well, I can order wholesale, but they're not going to deliver to my residence. That might be true in very little cases. And a lot of times that has a lot of high minimum orders. A lot of times they will deliver just fine to small brick and mortar stores, small residential. I've had pallets delivered to my home many, many times in big, huge semi type trucks. Your neighborhood might not like that, but we'll go through that. And then finally, the fifth one is I can't find profitable products to sell with wholesale suppliers. Oh, we're going to save that one till the end because that one's like my, my least favorite one, but also there's so many solutions for that. So let's start off right with number one, wholesale is too expensive or I can't afford it. Blah. Yes, you can. What is the real truth? The real truth is that wholesale is extremely affordable. As a matter of fact, opening orders can be as little as one item. So I know some distributors, some vendors, some wholesalers that they literally have no minimum order. They don't also offer free freight, but they will say you can buy one of something at a wholesale price. You can buy two of these, three of these, five of these. There's no minimum price order. There's no minimum quantity order. They literally just like, you can come in and buy one thing or 10 things. The only thing that they, that they require is that it's business to business. You're not just a customer off the street wanting to buy one thing. You actually have to register your business with them and then they will literally sell to you one item. 
So busting that myth right away. Also single unit purchases. So when you're thinking about these, these truths is that a lot of times people think I can't just buy one unit from one company. Absolutely, yes, you can. If you just want one product from one product line from one company, they will sell to you. Now, they might have some minimums. Most wholesalers do have minimum orders, but I've seen minimum orders as little as zero and as much as $500. The, the average range, just so you know, because yes, buying inventory costs money, right? Um, the average is between 200 and 500 is what I've seen. There's as little as nothing or little as $100 and then minimum orders. But the good news is if you order once, the reorder is often far less. So once you place an order with a vendor once, oftentimes that first opening minimum order might be $350, but when you place another order, it's $100. So you know you have to check into those. There's low reorder amounts. So this is something that's really helpful to know. So let me ask you this, those that are doing arbitrage, those that are doing online arbitrage or retail arbitrage, or have been thrifting or, or just getting into this and they're just not sure, how, how much do you actually spend like at the grocery store? How much do you actually spend at when you're doing retail arbitrage, for example? Um, I don't know about you, but when I used to go retail arbitraging, I would fill up carts for $500 or more. So if you can afford that, you can certainly afford wholesale. So just keep that in mind. Volume discounts. This is another thing that will help you when you're ordering for wholesale. The prices can come down when you order volume, but you're not required to order volume. So there's just a lot of different ways that you can go through wholesale being too expensive. The reality is stop assuming and start asking. So if you've got a distributor that you want to work with and you're assuming all these different things, oh, they won't sell to me, all these different excuses, you can't get a yes if you don't ask. You can't fill out, a, you can't get an account if you don't fill out the application or reach out and talk to someone about that. So there's lots of ways that wholesale is affordable. It can be really minimally cost. Now, is there shipping costs? Sure. If you don't reach certain thresholds, certain um, freight discounts, like if you order $1,000 or more, there's free freight. If you're not reaching that, it can still be very reasonable. Oftentimes, wholesalers charge a percentage of a fee um, to ship items to you. So maybe it's like a 10 or 12% freight. So if you're ordering $350 and you have to pay 10% freight, you're paying, you know, $35 or whatever it is. So the results vary from vendor to vendor, also by their location, but wholesale does not have to be expensive. And a lot of them, if you sign up for their newsletters or emails, they're constantly doing deals. They're doing early buy orders. That's like my number one thing. Early buy orders, once you get catalogs and you get set up with them, then you start getting these discounts. So there's 15% off of these particular products. There's 20% off if you buy you know, this amount before this time. So there's always, always, always ways to save money when it comes to wholesale, but starting out, you do not have to pay thousands of dollars in inventory and have them ship it to you. Wholesale is extremely affordable. Number two. I can't find wholesalers, vendors, distributors, suppliers, dealers. By the way, those are all kinds of different names that you're gonna find for wholesale companies. Vendors, distributors, suppliers, dealers. Those are the link, that's the lingo that you're gonna to wanna to look for when you're looking at websites and different things. Here's the truth. Across the world, across America, all the time, there are trade shows trade show websites that these vendors have to go and register. So they pack up half of their store, set up stuff in, in trade shows and show you their product and they want your business. Now, trade show websites are much better at delivering wholesale vendors to you than let's say Google. So a lot of people are like, oh, Google is the only place to find wholesale vendors. Oh, that is so not true. So I'm gonna give you one quick resource that if you, do, if you get nothing else and you hit end and you move on from this podcast right now, go to mommyincome.com slash 100, that's the number 100, and you're going to find a link to the trade show stalking video. What does this mean? This means that you're going to go to ASD's website, for example, and you're going to see all of their vendors and you're going to be able to reach out to them right now, even though they don't have a trade show going on today. You can find thousands, and I mean thousands, this is no joke, this is not an exaggeration, thousands of wholesalers um, within an hour from this website. Now, is it going to take you longer to comb through categories and find the vendors that you want? Sure. 
mommyincome.com slash 100, you will find this video and by the, the, this five minute or less video that you can watch, and then you'll be able to find wholesale vendors and distributors from there. You can also do a local search. So this is one of my favorite things to be able to find local distributors. Why are local distributors so much fun? Because number one, they're regional. You can access them faster and easier than say somebody in a different state. They might sell worldwide, but they're local to you. What does that also mean? That also means the potential for picking up things and not having to pay freight or having freight be cheaper. So look for local. Google, you know, wholesalers in my area, wholesalers in this zip code, in this county, in this state. What are the products manufactured in my state? Just Google that and see all the things, write them down, start visiting their websites. This does not have to be so complicated. You just need a place to start. And if you haven't started anywhere, the trade show stocking video, mommyincome.com slash 100, that's the first place to start. You can find so many vendors and there's so many trade shows to even look at. You can look at Halloween trade shows. You can look at food trade shows. You can find them. Again, Google is your friend. Now, another thing is industry newsletters. So industry newsletters are great things to subscribe to in order to get the latest on the products that are coming out, the vendors that are featured, new wholesalers that have created brand new products that want to sell to you. Industry newsletters are like Retail Insider or um, this, you know, look for retail newsletters or retail companies that talk about up and coming products, product trends. So again, a quick Google search will let you go into like Retail Insider or um, <clears throat> things like that, that can help you to find wholesalers and distributors that are willing to work with people. Another really easy way to find some wholesale distributors is to look on the back of the product. Yes, grab an actual product, go to Target, Walmart, somewhere else. Grab a box, look at manufactured by on the back. Near the barcode, it's going to show you a name and an address of who manufactured that product. Or distributed by or manufactured by, write that stuff down and then do your research. Guess what? Being in business is pretty much all research. After you do all the research, the selling stuff is the easy part. The hardest part is finding good profitable products, which we're going to talk about, and those types of things. So doing the research and for, you know, I know during these crazy, you know, times where we've all been on quarantine and things are starting to open up and there's, you know, sickness and viruses and things like that. I'm not sure how many trade shows they're going to actually be this year or how different they will look, but I can tell you this, companies still want to sell product. They still want to sell product to anyone who's buying and they're going to want to connect with people. If they can't do their normal trade shows, they are going to be desperate to get the customers that are coming into trade shows that way. So look for their online presence, sign up for their newsletters, get a separate Gmail account that's only for your wholesale stuff and put everything in there so that you can communicate with vendors and, and get these different you know catalogs and things like that. So don't skip those things. Okay. Myth number three, they won't sell to me. They won't sell to third party sellers. They won't sell to Amazon sellers. The truth is over the past couple of years, many, many companies are changing their policies. Vendors are aware that e-commerce is bigger than ever and that brick and mortar stores are becoming less and less of their customers. Some of them are slower to move. I even have a story about this when we, when we did our workshop the one year, we were told absolute no by one company that was just like, you know, they kind of ushered us out the door. It was like, oh, you sell on Amazon? Out, 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 out. We don't deal with Amazon. Okay, that is going to happen. So I'm not going to lie to you and tell you that you're not going to get rejected. But the reality is for one no, there can be 20 more yeses. There are companies you can walk into and say, I sell on Amazon. They say, I don't care where you sell. I don't care if you sell out of the back of your trunk. Like we're here to sell you products and what you do with them after that is totally up to you. Those are my favorite companies because then I have free will to do what I want to and need to with their products. But also just keep this in mind. After this COVID crisis and the things that have been going on with that, 
there are more and more wholesalers opening up to realize that they are leaving out so much money. They're, they're leaving so much money on the table by saying no to Amazon sellers or third party sellers for that matter. They are so worried about the market saturation or branding issues or things like that, that they are less and less likely to sell to Amazon sellers. But times have changed. Now we're seeing that we are way more important to some of these wholesalers than they have ever realized. When the whole country shut down and every single small mom and pop shop and brick and mortar store was absolutely closed down and couldn't sell anything, guess who was still in business? Me. Guess who was still in business? All of you. You are still selling actively. I was begging my vendors to ship to me somehow. I'm like, if you're open, could you possibly ship this? I'm sold out and these things are selling and they're like, wow, you're doing so well. I'm like, e-commerce, everybody's buying online. So this is going to change the landscape going forward. So don't get so worried about people saying no to you. Keep looking, keep going. Some of them might say yes, but then they have rules. So things like map pricing, minimum advertised price. They say you can sell anywhere you want as long as you sell for $18.99 or more. That is our minimum advertised price, map pricing. You might have to sign forms and offer this up to your wholesalers. Tell them I'm willing to sign map agreements. I'm willing to give you my store name and make sure that you can monitor my sales. I just want to do business with you. And so that is that comes in the form of having relationships with companies and stuff starting that up. So um, they also can sometimes offer exclusives for people who ask and say, I would like to be your sole Amazon seller. And here's how I'm going to contribute to the well-being of your company. There's lots and lots of ways to be able to get them to say yes. Um, and then, then there's other, you can't get a yes if you don't ask him. So if you're just assuming or their website says no third party sellers, I've seen this before and I just disregard and I send something to them and say, can we have a conversation? I would love to represent your products in this way. And we'll talk about that when it comes to bundling because bundling has got me in the door more times than not. Okay, next one is I am... I, I residential delivery. I'm a small seller. I don't have a warehouse. I don't have, you know, I'm not doing a lot of business. They're not going to sell to me. They're not going to deliver to my residents. The truth is that some will, most will, as a matter of fact, I have had pallets delivered to my home because they're not necessarily worried about the pallets or the things like that that are delivered. They just want to offload the goods and give them to you. So you have to ask. The other thing that you can do if they won't deliver to a residence is consider a prep center. Um, a prep center is where you have your goods delivered to a center that will send them into Amazon for you. So if you're receiving a pallet and you don't have the capacity for a pallet, say you live in, you know, downtown New York and you've got a, you know, studio apartment. Well, clearly you're not getting a pallet there, but there are prep centers, myprepcenter.com is my favorite, um, where they will accept your inventory and they can process it and send it to Amazon for you for a fee. So don't use that as an excuse because it's not one. You can send them items and they can process them for you, of course, for a fee. But the reality is that shouldn't be an excuse to stop you. I've worked with many, many vendors who literally will deliver to my backwoods janky driveway. Now, I wish I could show you, like, uh, maybe I'll make a video of me walking down my driveway so you can see this crazy long, you know, half dirt, kind of two track looking driveway that I have that I've been working because I've had them come here and deliver. Oftentimes it's UPS or FedEx and makes no difference to them if they're delivering six boxes or 16 boxes or whatever for you. So just keep that in mind um, that that is not an excuse. There's always a way around it. And the final thing around it is to get a PO box or a UPS, um, UPS store mailbox. So we have a local mail place here that does shipping and packing. There used to be a UPS store. They process all that kind of stuff. Well, we have a box there, number one, because we don't want to use our home address as our business address. That's always a good idea to never, you know, not use your home address as a billing address, but it can be a shipping address. So just consider that first. Get a PO box. And then if there's something really huge, like a pallet being delivered, you can have it delivered there. Let your UPS store know that it's being delivered there. And then you can go pick it up. You could rent a truck from Home Depot for $19 an hour. You could rent a whole truck for Home Depot and deliver it to your house. I'm not saying that's the easy way or the best way. What I'm saying is that it's possible if you're willing to do it. 
I recommend a prep center before that because that's way easier than having to do all this stuff. But if it's a once in a while kind of thing where you're getting a pallet delivered to your house, then there's ways around it. FedEx will allow you to have something delivered to the FedEx hub and then you have to go pick it up from the FedEx hub. So there are ways around residential delivery and residential versus business addresses. Myth number five is I can't find profitable products to sell even when I find vendors. Guys, this is my favorite one. This is my favorite one to talk about and this is my favorite one to put my arm around you but then also tell you like it's some tough love. This is going to be some tough love. That when you can't find products to sell, you're not looking in the right places. Does that mean that you can go on to any vendor and say, okay, I want to sell the top 10 selling products on Amazon? Well, guess what? You're not going to be able to compete with Walmart and Amazon themselves and all these other really big companies. That is mistake number one, is thinking, oh my gosh, this brand new top frozen doll that I want to sell, I want to go to Mattel and get all this stuff for really, really cheap and then sell it on Amazon. Margins are super, super thin. That is going to be the reality. That's one of the things that's not on this list as myth busters because a lot of people assume that prices are super, super cheap. So this is like myth busting, like, you know, an extra bonus one, right? That prices are significantly cheaper than retail price stores. Honestly, wholesale is less expensive, but it's a myth that wholesale is at least 50% off retail price. Honest to goodness, the average is maybe 40, but oftentimes it's 30 or even 20% off. Sometimes you can get a better discount buying something on sale at a store than you can from wholesale. Now, Volume discounts are important and prices vary by volume. So it varies by company as well. But a lot of people think the standard is, well, if this is $50 in a store, I'm going to get it for $25 wholesale. Reality is that's not always the case. Prices, wholesale prices fluctuate greatly depending on cost, cost of goods and all those different things. So be aware, don't keep your head in the sand thinking you're gonna get a wholesale price sheet because this happens to so many people and I just wanna hug them. And so I try to tell you guys this ahead of time. Don't get your price sheet and expect it to be the best prices that you've ever seen because the reality is they don't care. Wholesalers don't care that you have Amazon fees to pay or that you might have inbound shipping fees or prep center fees. They just have this wholesale price. And honestly, from brick and mortar stores, and they don't have any selling fees. Yeah, they have overhead and they have rent and they have all these different things. But what they don't have is Amazon fees that we do. So don't go into this thinking that everything's going to be at least 50% off because that's actually not off of retail. Um, and so just be aware that like 30 to 40 is usually the average and sometimes it's 50 and sometimes it's, it's even less than that. So big box retailers like Amazon, they can buy massive quantities, which gives them better pricing. I don't know about you, but if someone came to me and said, I want to buy 1 million units, how, what is my price? I'd be like, <laughs> for a million, like a dollar that I can make a million dollars, right? That, that's the idea. So Amazon and Walmart and these big, huge corporations and big box stores, they're negotiating really, really big prices. Can you compete with that? No, probably not. So what is the advice? The advice is to not compete with that and go look at products that aren't competing directly with these big box retailers. You do not have to sell top selling products on Amazon in the top 10 categories to make a living on Amazon. I make seven figures on Amazon year over year, and I do not sell anything that most of you would even have heard of. This is very generic stuff that I like to sell because there's no branding issues. There's nothing like that, but like people still buy stuff. People still buy average everyday things that aren't big top brand sellers. I don't have to compete with Amazon, things like that. So that was your little bonus one. And now it's, I can't find profitable products to sell on wholesale. The reality is there are millions of products to sell on Amazon, millions of products. And although the margins are very thin on things that you can sell singly, the reality is that it's really hard to sell competitive single unit items on Amazon and make hardly any. Some people are in the volume game and they want to sell 
5,000 units a month at 10 cents profit. But what happens if one person lowers their price 10 cents and then you can't compete? Now you're losing money. Do you want to keep your margins that thin? I surely do not. So what do we do about not finding profitable products? Maybe find a great selling product and then realize the margins like, wow, I'm going to make a dollar fifty. Is this worth my time? Or that's my prep center fee. And now I'm not making any money. What is the solution to this? The solution, there's two solutions in my mind. There's many solutions, but I'm going to give you two. Number one, look at different products. Stop looking at all the easy, low-hanging fruit that every other lazy competitor of yours is looking at and dig a little bit deeper. Do some research on specific niches that want specific products. It's really easy to try to jump into grocery and try to sell it, all the big name brands of different things and make a bunch of different bundles and varieties. Great, but your margins on grocery are super, super thin and you're working with something that has an end date. I don't know about you, but I don't love selling things with an end date because like your money's only good for a shelf life. And then that product is completely wasted. You can't repurpose it. You can't resell it. You can't do anything. It's just, you might as well eat the 1200 gr granola bars that expired because you couldn't sell them. Don't want that problem. I'd rather have something I can work with and rework if it's not producing the results that I want. So don't constantly go to, oh, I'm going to look at the top 100 things in Amazon and whatever else. Actually go to page five, six, seven, eight to look for different things on Amazon and do your research because those things are still selling consistently. And you'd be surprised at how little competition there is when you move down the road a little bit from all these big, best-selling, brand new, trendy type products. So you don't want to get caught doing some sort of trendy product and then all of a sudden you end up with a garage full of stuff you can't sell. I mean, how many of us have been there? I've been there lots of times where I've had to liquidate things and just, you learn lessons. So what can you do about these thin margins that you're finding once you find wholesalers? You get creative. You bundle products. The reason we started bundling, because we had that real reality of the price list that came in. The price list that came in that said, oh, these are $2.50 and I can buy them for, you know, $3 at the store. And so I thought, oh my gosh, 50 cent margin, that's nothing, but these are still selling really well. So we thought to bundle them with something else that's highly complimentary. What happens is you take product A, product B, and product C that all work well together, create a bundle pack, and now you've also created a margin for yourself. Each one of those has a smaller margin, and each one of those, now you have one Amazon fee, one package, one thing to pay a prep center to prepare for you or one package to make rather than individual items that are making you nickel and diming your profit margin. Amazon charges a fee per transaction. So if you combine a bundle into one transaction and it's a bundle product instead of selling three individual products, now that percentage of fee is now one time. And so you can also charge a premium for bundles. People are happy to just have one click in a bundle. So when you bundle things together, you're creating an opportunity not only for your customer for speed and time and convenience, but you're also creating bigger margins for yourself because you're paying one Amazon fee, you're using one package to ship, things like that. So thinking about this stuff, using competing products as well, looking at the products there that are highly complementary and competing products with the products that you're selling already. So a good way to start finding distributors, again, do not forget mommyincome.com slash 100, watch the trade show video. You will be surprised at how many vendors you have at your fingertips within that. Look beyond the top sellers. I mean, I don't even want anyone to look at the top sellers. Why? Because nine out of 10 times, you can't compete there anyway. There's somebody with deeper pockets than you, like Amazon, and you won't be able to sell those things. But don't get discouraged because you don't have to sell everything to everyone. There are millions of Amazon customers. There are millions and millions of products to sell. I challenge you now to look at your recent, like look at your phone. Everybody is an Amazon buyer here, right? Hello, I buy on Amazon all the time. I'm actually going to do this while we're sitting here. So I'm going to open up my Amazon account and I'm going to look not as a seller, but as a buyer, what are the last few things that we purchased on Amazon? 
And I think you'd be surprised at what this actually looks like. Okay, so your order. So we're getting a little personal here, right? So <laughs> a freestanding toilet paper holder, right? This is the one of the things I bought. We just remodeled our bathroom and uh, I didn't want to drill into the wall or the whole, you know, the, the cabinet and everything to put a toilet paper holder. So I decided to buy one that was like freestanding. It holds extra rolls. It's freestanding. It's pretty. So that's one of the things we bought. Another thing we bought were uh, my husband bought <laughs> lighting for his, re, you know, replacement lighting for his um, light that he uses to sand drywall. Um, we've dropped, bought some stretch pipe. I bought some jalapeno jelly. That's actually a bundle that I bought from one of my clients that I love that. We bought a puzzle um, to do during COVID. My husband bought an electric sander. Oh, I bought these magnifying glasses. <laughs> I should pick these out. I bought these magnifying glasses because I, I repair and sell vintage jewelry on eBay, and I love doing that. That's like hobby in my spare time as I laugh. Um, but like that does not have a brand. That's not something people buy every single day all the time, top bestsellers. But guess what? People buy them. It has a great rank. It has, they work really well. It came in a nice packaging. So these are things that people are buying that you're, people are overlooking. A lot of times people think, oh my gosh, top selling everything, this and that, all these just different big brands. Look at your own purchasing history. Look at your purchasing history around your house and realize that like, the truth is that you don't have to sell big branded name brand items to sell items. Sometimes people just want a really, they want what they want at a good price and they're not exactly brand loyal. So just keep that in mind. Look beyond top sellers, top selling brands, big, huge distribution companies and think smaller. Think smaller vendors. They're more willing and more hungry to work with people to make sales. So if you can create that win-win with somebody with a relationship with the wholesaler, then you've got this perfect match. So just consider that when you're thinking about it. So just as a review, all of these things, you can start wholesale. It is not too expensive. Sometimes for zero, sometimes for um, as little as $100, you can start wholesale. You can find distributors. Yes, you can. Remember, that's our code word for the day. If you want to join our Facebook group, you can use your code word. Yes, you can. Yes, you can find distributors. Mommyincome.com slash 100. Go watch the video. It's very short and it will help you. They won't sell to Amazon sellers. Yes, they will. You're, if you get a no, then move on to someone else because if they say no, someone else is willing to say yes. So keep looking, be persistent, be consistent. They won't deliver to a residence. Yes, they will get a, UPS, get a PO box, get a UPS store box, or just ask them. Ask them if they can ship UPS or FedEx and they all do residential delivery. I can't find profitable products. You might not be able to find tons of profitable products right away. This is why we bundle. This is why I bundle all the time because single unit items on Amazon are very, they're very, very competitive and it's hard to make the kind of margins I want. I don't want to sell 5,000 units a month of anything. That's too much work. Instead, I'd rather sell 50 units of my bundle at 10 to $15 a pop rather than 5,000 units of one penny. So let's think about that. Um, so you can find profitable products. You should learn to bundle because that is the best way to profit from wholesale in a way that not everyone is doing. So you, incre you decrease your competition, you increase your margins, and you own the buy box. I mean, that is like the trifecta of Amazon success. How do you start bundling? You go to mommyincome.com slash system, and you can get the wholesale bundles system from there. I hope this helped give you some confidence to be able to start jumping into wholesale. Again, come into the Facebook group if you have questions about wholesale and how to get started and nervous and stay tuned for some upcoming episodes because I've got something really special for you, something I've never done before, but I'm going to do in the next couple of weeks. Make sure that you stay tuned because you might find yourself very happy with this little special gift that I'm going to give you. So until next time, I'll see you next time on the Amazon Files.